So I was saying that I want to talk about something that is personal to me, which is keeping atheism positive. Because so often, and I'm sure a lot of you have encountered this, whenever you talk to people about atheism, if you're even open about it, they react a lot of the times negatively, unless they're people who you're used to discussing these types of things with. But if it's family that might happen to be religious, like my situation, or people who maybe don't know you yet, it almost comes off like when they find out you're an atheist, they're like, oh, and they take a step back from you. And I've experienced this so many times, I'm like, well, I thought you were gonna be normal, but now I know. Now I know the truth, and it's something that I have to deal with a lot. So, it's hard for me, because this is something that I'm actually pretty passionate about. And I think that we're all good people. We all want really great things, and we have to work together to accomplish those things. And it's really discouraging when you come across people who take that step back from you. It's discouraging when people you know, raise an eyebrow or look at you like you're different, or there's something weird about you just because you don't believe in God. So I want to talk about how to keep atheism positive, but I also want to give you a little bit of my backstory because I think it's important for you to be able to understand where I'm coming from. And then I want to talk about a lot of the reasons why I think people stigmatize atheism the way that they do. And then I'm going to talk about ways that we can kind of work together to improve that. So, in the effort to start off with something positive, I'm going to tell you guys something. You're a murderer. <laughs> You're a murderer. Imagine standing in a room full of people and having them guess that about you. That's my own fault, really, because I was at a YouTube conference pretty recently, and I was talking to a lot of people, and now this is like, YouTube conferences are so different than atheist conferences. I'm sure you guys, a lot of you have been to TAM, which I was recently at, or the American Atheist Conference, and these types of things are very formal. You know, there's a lot of speakers, a lot of very technical things, and it's very academic, which is great. But when you go to YouTube conferences, it's totally different. I don't know if any of you guys have been to Playlist Live or VidCon, but it's just a very young audience. The average age is probably 15 or 16. You know, so, and, and you know, they're, they're running after certain people that they, you know, watch on YouTube and screaming after them, and it's just, it's, it's crazy. I almost don't even want to go anymore because if they see some, you know, boy that they have a crush on, it's a stampede and you better get out of the way. Or they're, they're gonna run you over. It's dangerous. It's very dangerous. So, you know, I'm used to a mix of these types of things, like very academic settings and very fun, lively settings. And it's so different to see the different kinds of people out there. And whenever I was at this YouTube conference, I was in, like I said, a different crowd of people, and I asked them this question. I said, what would I have to be for you to distrust me more than a rapist? And they all gave me this really weird look, like, first of all, what's wrong with this girl to ask this question? And second of all, um, I, I guess, maybe a murderer? Did you kill somebody, Jacqueline? And I'm like, okay, well, one of these things are true. I didn't kill anybody, so you guys can relax. You're all safe. I'm not crazy. Um, but I don't have my knife with me, but I'm not crazy. Um, so they guessed that I was a murderer because they figured that's the only thing that she could possibly be a part of that would be more distrusted than a rapist. Well, I happen to be a part of a group that fits that definition, but it is not a murderer, so don't worry. It's an atheist. Yay, atheists, right? Evil, horrible people that are more distrusted than rapists. And the reason that I say this, there's a study out there, I'm sure a lot of you have already become aware of it, but there was a study at the University of Oregon and the University of British Columbia where they asked a group of people if there was a situation where somebody was driving and they hit a parked car and then they damaged it really badly and just took off, they left the scene of the accident, gone. Maybe later on that day, they found a wallet, and it had a lot of money in it. They were like, oh, that's nice. Put it in their pocket, walked away, kept it, didn't do anything, didn't report it, didn't turn it in. What would you expect of this person? How would you define this person? Would you more easily say that they were a teacher? Mm, no, not a teacher. What about a rapist teacher? I don't know why they put, no, this is one thing, whenever I was, <laughs> whenever I was looking through this, this is what they said. They had teacher, rapist teacher, and atheist teacher. They're all teachers. So beware of those rapist teachers. Out there. But, um, yeah, so <laughs> I, that's taken from the study, not, not from me. Um, but yeah, there was that question. And of course, regardless of the religious background of a lot of these people who were answering these questions, the majority of the responses said atheist teacher. Really? <laughs> really? Atheists, more distrusted than rapists. What, why? Like whenever I was reading the study, I was like dumbfounded. I was like, why? 
So that's why I asked these group of younger people what I would have to be for them to distrust me more than a rapist. And I'm glad they didn't say, well, atheist. Um, they probably weren't thinking like that. But it's, it's just disheartening for me to, to see things like this. Atheists, I mean, what have we done? We haven't done anything to anyone. We just simply personally don't believe in a God. And that puts us at a status below rapists who have clearly done something wrong. And to me, it's just unfortunate that we have to, to deal with that type of stigmatism and that stereotype that we're so distrusted. We're so, you know, looked at as like evil, bad people, devil worshipers. I'm sure you guys have heard that a lot, right? We're all Satanists. <laughs> exactly, it's very frustrating. So whenever I think about these types of things, it's hard for me. And it makes it even more difficult to come out whenever you do have to come out because you have these things in your head about how people are going to respond whenever you tell them, when they find this horrible thing out about you. It's scary because you already know, well, hey, worse than a rapist. <laughs> so that's something that's constantly in the back of your mind. And whenever I came out, which honestly, I didn't really have to tell anybody that I was an atheist. I, I got found out. I got busted. <laughs> I was making these YouTube videos. I was going to school and I was making these YouTube videos on the side as kind of like a side hobby, and I really didn't ever expect it to turn into something more than just that, a side hobby. And my reason for starting these videos was, you know, I, I was fighting for animal rights a lot. I was a vegetarian, and I wanted to get the word out about that. And then it kind of turned to religion whenever I started questioning my faith more, whenever I started having these doubts. And I had no one else to talk to, because my family is all very religious. My friends were all very religious. I was in a very Christian conservative area. And I had no one to talk to. I tried a little bit here and there, and it always it got received very poorly, and it always made me feel terrible. So I became really great friends with my camera <laughs> and the people on the other side of that camera. And it was really refreshing because I found a forum where I could express myself almost as though I were talking to friends because that's what it needed to be for me. It was kind of a selfish thing at first. I needed a friend to talk to. I needed somebody who I could tell my feelings to without being judged, without getting that raised eyebrow, without getting people staring back at me like I was the devil. So that's what YouTube was for me at first. It was a way for me to express myself and then people responded positively and it kind of turned into something. And as it turned into something, more people began to talk about it and know about it. And through the grapevine, a lot of people in my family found my videos on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's how I came out. It wasn't intentional. It wasn't something that I got to do on my own terms. It was me pretty much being kind of stupid, thinking that I could continue doing this online without somebody finding out. It was like my dirty little secret. I was going to school. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell any of my friends. I didn't tell, you know, very few people knew about it. And most of these people were people that I had met through the atheist community or the YouTube communities online. So I made new friends. And obviously, these new friends that I made were aware of it because that's how I met them. But people from my personal life before, I didn't tell, and it was kind of, it was mortifying. It was very embarrassing for me to have to have this happen because in my videos, especially whenever I first started off, I was a lot more aggressive. Because you know whenever you start off something, whenever you're new to a cause, you tend to be more aggressive with it. That's how I was whenever I became a vegetarian. I would do the horrible, I would, I would go after people and I'd be like, what are you doing? Why are you eating meat? You know, I was that person, I'm sorry. I hate, it. yeah, I'm sorry. I hate, I hate it. I, I look back and I feel bad now. But that's how I was because I was new to it. You know, and sometimes when you're new to things, you're very aggressive and you come off a little bit mean sometimes. And I feel like whenever I, I first started my atheist videos, I was a lot more aggressive. I would cuss a lot more. I was more in your face. I had just like mean face that I would do on my videos. And those are the ones that they found when they found me on YouTube. Those are the ones that my, my family decided to come across. And they're like, you know, not only, you know, if you look at some of my videos now, I'm more calm and I'm talking about, these are some myths about atheism, smile. Um, <laughs> but at first I was like, you know, bad words, expletive. And uh, yeah, those are the ones that they found. So that was how I came out. But, <laughs> so that wasn't fun. Um, but a lot of people do have to, you know, if they so choose to, they come out, they, they get to do it on a little bit softer terms, which is probably a little bit more beneficial to them. But a lot of times whenever you do this kind of thing, and I've heard stories like this from people, and it's something that I've actually dealt with too, one of the first reactions you get 
is one of like, oh, oh my God, you poor thing. What must have happened to you in your life to make you an atheist? Because right, no normal, rational person would make the decision to not believe in God. Something must have happened to you. There must have been some catastrophic event in your life. Did your whole family get murdered or something? You know, did you do it? Are you the murderer? No. Um, you know, they, they think that. They think that something must have happened to me. I must have been traumatized in some way. That's not the case. I mean, I'm not going to lie and say that there aren't things that caused issues with me whenever I was being raised religious. There were definitely things that I experienced that were weird and probably changed the way that I viewed it and probably helped whenever I became an atheist with my aggression because I was you know, recalling these things that I had to go through and I was like, damn it, this pisses me off. You know, so I, I let that kind of flow out into my videos a little bit at first whenever I started. So one of the things that they say all the time is, you know, what happened to you? So I'm gonna go through and give you a little bit of my background and tell you about how I was raised so that you can get an idea a little bit of some of the little things that I went through. Now, nothing catastrophic, like I said, but there were little things here and there. Whenever I was in about second grade, I think, um, now keep in mind, I went to Catholic school, raised very Catholic from kindergarten through my senior year in high school. So a lot. We had, we had a church every Wednesday morning. Then I had to go again to church on Saturday with my family. And then we had an hour of religion class every single day. And this was, like I said, from kindergarten through senior year in high school. Mandatory. Second grade, I remember this is like, the, it's like a, such a twisted story. It was Easter. And, you know, they're like, oh, let's think of a fun Easter activity for these kids. Really fun activity. They decided to give us all little Jesus pictures to color in. Now it was like, the, you know, the, the typical picture of Jesus, you know, dead. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they gave us this picture to color and we're kids and we're like we're used to seeing this kind of thing so whenever you see this picture it's like yeah it's Jesus yeah. It's my Jesus I'm going to color him in so we colored in our Jesuses and then they helped us cut them out and, we, and then they laminated them I was like oh that's okay, okay thank you um, so they laminated my cut out Jesus they brought us our Jesuses back the next day we were all excited because we're like ooh lamination that makes it so official it makes you feel like you're an artist um and not only did they bring us back our little Jesuses, they brought us back little wooden crosses. Mm -hmm. Little wooden crosses and little nails and hammers. <laughs> yeah, and red paint. I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating, and this is, is twisted. It's screwed up. <sighs> when you're a kid, you tend to identify with toys. You know, you play with your Barbies or your little action figures and they're kind of real to you in a sense because you're a kid, you have an imagination, you know? And whenever you have this picture cut out in front of you, it kind of means something to you. It's like, you know, your little Jesus. You don't want to nail it to a wooden cross. <laughs> That's traumatizing. Like, I remember some of the kids in our class actually getting kind of emotional. Because, you know, they, they drill the story into your head of the crucifixion. They play Passion of the Christ or things like that to classes. And it's, you know, you watch this guy get beaten and tortured and then nailed to a cross. I don't care what religious thing you give to this like, or you attribute to it. It doesn't matter. Watching that is emotional, especially for a child. It's, it's definitely a child abuse, in my opinion. So you're used to seeing these images in your head. You're used to this emotional, gut-wrenching feeling that you get, like you would get watching anyone be tortured and killed. And then you have to do it to something that you created that represents it. <laughs> I mean, there were girls that were, I mean, I remember kids really crying. And then, you know, you have to put the little nail and the little Jesus hand and, yeah, I'm not kidding. Like, and then, you know, there was, like I said, red paint if you want to add dramatic effect. <laughs> so that was my Easter fun in second grade. I think my mom still has my cutout Jesus somewhere. I should go back and find it just for keepsake. <laughs> well, that was definitely one of the things that, that I remember looking back. I'm like, what was wrong with those teachers? And speaking of these teachers having things wrong with them, uh, I could go on about this all day, but I'm going to just point out the biggest things that I can think of. Otherwise, we'd be here forever. But um, my parents got divorced when I was very young, and they got married through the Catholic Church. And whenever you get married in the Catholic Church, if something happens and you need to get a divorce, tradition has it that you also need to get an annulment through the church. 
Now, <laughs> this isn't always practical for everyone, especially for my parents' situation because my dad was a musician, he was traveling, he wasn't always there, and sorry, whenever you're going through a divorce, your you know, ex is not exactly the person you want to be spending a lot of time going through counseling with, with the Catholic Church. So, you know, I don't even feel like that needs to be justified. They didn't do it, <laughs> needless to say. And um, apparently, whenever you don't get an annulment, that's some sort of huge deal, right? In the Catholic Church, you're not good enough anymore to receive communion. You can't go around and get the cracker, for those of you guys who don't know what communion is. Um, yeah, you're not, supposed to, you're not supposed to take communion. You can't have Jesus anymore in your life. You can't eat him anymore because, <laughs> because you didn't get an annulment. All right, that's the rule. No more eating Jesus for you. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's apparently a pretty big deal because when I would go to church with my mom on Saturday afternoon, she would do it anyways. She'd go around and get communion. And my wonderful teachers, God bless them, they would come up to me, little me, and they'd be like, you know your mom is sinning, right? God doesn't like it when she takes communion because she didn't get an annulment. She's not pure enough to get Jesus crackers. I'm not kidding. Like, they, they harassed me in class. They would pull me to the side and tell me, like, you need to have a talk with your mother. What nerve of these people? I, I, I just couldn't believe it. And like I said, these are things that I go back and I think about that gives me a little bit of extra rage, and then it sucks because you go back home, and the very people who you feel like you're almost defending with this anger are justifying it. You know? They're like, well, you know, it's just, you know, not a big deal. I'm like, Mom, that is a big deal. It hurt my feelings as a kid. It was like, you know, I was already having to deal with this, you know, personal struggle of having my parents be divorced. And on top of it, I have my teachers coming after me telling me that my mom's not pure. Are you kidding me? That was what I had to put up with. And then in high school, I had a slight rebellious streak. Not too bad. I still got good grades and stuff. I wanted to go to college and study. I don't know why. Um, but, uh... Yeah, I, I had a problem with a lot of things in my religion class. Shock value there. Um, <laughs> but I, I was on the debate team, and I liked thinking about different things, and I liked, you know, criticizing different things. And this was a part in my life, like, where I was starting to question not even that much, honestly, religion. And uh, I remember in one of my religion classes, they were talking about purgatory. I'm sure you guys have heard about that. It's the place where they send the little kids who don't have Christian mommies and daddies who die when they're too young or if they're not baptized. So <laughs> that's the belief of the Catholic Church. So I, I asked my teacher, I'm like, really? This sounds ridiculous to me. Okay, so if there's a kid and they have parents that are maybe Muslim or atheist or whatever, or maybe they're Christian and they just didn't happen to get their kid baptized, if that kid goes in the middle of the street and gets hit by a bus, they're going to purgatory, they can't go to heaven. I thought, Jesus loved all the little children. Only the ones who are Christian and baptized, apparently. So I, uh, I, had, a, I had an issue with that, and I went back and forth with my teacher, and I, uh, I almost got into a lot of trouble, but I stopped before it totally ruined my reputation at that school. <laughs> but it was hard for me, because I also had a, I had a really close friend ever since the third grade, and he was always you know, very shy very shy kid. And he didn't come out as gay to me until college. And the reason for that is because he was terrified. He was terrified. He had dreams of going to an Ivy League school. And he knew, he knew that if he admitted it or if somebody found out, even if a close friend like me found out and accidentally said something you know how kids do in high school, it would, he would get expelled. He would get expelled, kicked out of the school because he's gay. And then how's that going to look on a college transcript? Not good. Not good. You're not going to get in. And it's very competitive right now. And that's something that had to weigh on him, and it, it messed him up. And it just, it pisses me off thinking about the kind of feeling that you must have to go through having to hide yourself for fear of success in your life. Like, it's holding him back. So that was another thing that, I mean, like, there's just so many different things that I can think of. Now, that doesn't mean that there was some huge catastrophic event that ruined me that just... You know, I can't sleep at night because of it. And now I'm an atheist because I'm so mad. No, it has nothing to do with that. No. My, my decision to be an atheist, maybe my curiosity for it was fueled by these things. 
by these inequalities that I would see, by these weird things that I had to experience, but it was more of a logical process that, that took me to the end. Like, I'm happy that, you know, these social problems motivated me to get to thinking about it, but that's certainly not the reason I became an atheist. But I thought that it was the Catholic Church. Oh, it's just the Catholic Church that I have a problem with. It's not, it's not every Christian sect. No, no, it's just Catholics. So I went through a phase where I thought maybe I'll be Protestant for a little bit. I'll try different churches. <clears throat> I tried so many different churches and, uh, well, I never felt that thing. You know, you hear a lot of people, oh, you'll know. It's just that thing that you experience, that feeling that you get. Mm, okay, I'm waiting for it. You know, I, I just never came. Like, I mean, I, I experienced people around me talking in tongues and like shaking violently and doing these things. I'm like, what is wrong with them? I'm Catholic. <laughs> You know, coming from a Catholic, it's like, ah, oh, amen, stand up, sit down, kneel. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. But you go to some of these other churches that I was trying to experiment around, and they're like rolling on the floor. It's like, oh, my God, I can't stay here. It's scary. <clears throat> so, no, I, uh, needless to say, I never felt that, that thing, that connection that, that I was so desperately seeking. And I wanted it. I really wanted it. And I was to the point where I thought, maybe it's my fault. Maybe it's my fault that I'm not getting this. I'm not trying hard enough. I'm not trying hard enough. Maybe I should try a little harder. Maybe I should uh, experience being an evangelical for a while. <clears throat> I'm, yeah. I did that mostly because um, some of my aunts and uncles got in my mind a little bit about it. They, they scared the shit out of me, to be honest. They would tell me, they're like, hell, you better believe that Jesus Christ is your savior. Otherwise, hell, eternal hellfire. I mean, that happened to me a lot. Like, and they would scare the crap out of me, and they, they told me, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, unfortunately, your Muslim friend in college, yeah, <clears throat> hell. Your, your gay friend, sorry, hell. I'm like, really? Um, but unfortunately, like, I was so terrified by this that I bought it. <laughs> I bought it. This is me in college now. Like, it's embarrassing to admit this, but I believed them. And I went with it for a long time. I was... <laughs> I remember my uncle passed, and uh, he was not a good guy. He caused a lot of problems for our family and stuff, and he was into drugs, and he betrayed a lot of people, and it was, it was a rough subject. But when he passed, I felt somehow entitled to say that he was going to hell. Because <laughs> I was going through my evangelical phase, and you know, my family sitting there weeping, and I'm standing there with my aunt being like, yeah, mm -hmm, hell. What the hell, you know, what the hell was wrong with me? To say that, like, I mean, I feel bad. I was a horrible person for a little while there. To say that to people when they're grieving, like, ugh. It sucks to, like, go back and think about these things. I had a, I had a friend in college. <clears throat> I don't know why she stayed my friend, to be honest. <laughs> I still tell her, I'm like, Amy, I don't know why you stayed my friend. Because in college, she was going through things, and she went through a scare where she thought she was pregnant. She wasn't, but she thought she was. Like, you know, girls, they freak out, you know, every chance. They, oh, my God, I think I'm pregnant. You know, no, you're just hungry. Um, you know, you haven't had lunch yet. No, I'm pregnant. And girls, they freak out. So she was doing one of those things, and I was feeling particularly snooty that day. And I, and I made some comment. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was along the lines of, well, if you decided to get an abortion, I don't think I could be your friend anymore. Like, you can't sit with us. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, you know, but, like, I just felt like, I felt like I needed to say it. I felt like I needed to push her in some kind of direction to not sin, you know? I don't want her to go to hell. And I have a, my uncle on my dad's side as a pastor, and one time he gave me this analogy that, that really resonated with me at the time. He was like, imagine that there's people driving down a road and the road splits at the end. And one side leads to green pastures and the other side falls off a cliff. <clears throat> and you're standing there, where, right in the middle where it dissects. And you're trying to direct people to go towards the green pastures. You don't want them to drive off the edge of the road. Well, that's what heaven and hell is. That's what life is. People are traveling down the road. They're traveling at you. You can determine. You can help push them in one side or the other. You can change the direction of their life. You can prevent them from falling off that cliff. And he's like, I want you to really envision it. And imagine people driving at you. Strangers. You would do everything that you could to get them to not die. You would want to help them. It's just in your human nature to do good things, which I'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, now imagine that they're not strangers anymore. Imagine that they're people that you know. Imagine that they're your family, your friends. Then you would become desperate. Then you would really try to, like, you'd jump in front of the car. You would do anything 
that it took to get them from driving out the edge of the cliff. And I'm like, wow, I need to do that. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Well, that's what I started doing. I started, you know, doing radical things because I felt like it was a life or death situation. I had to say those things to my friends. I had to say those things to my family. <sighs> so it's kind of embarrassing to admit, but that's the type of mentality that I had. And that's the type of mentality that a lot of religious people have. When they come at you and they want you to pray or they come at you and they want to save you, it's not malicious. It's, it's, they're actually trying to help you. And it's hard sometimes to keep that in mind whenever they're pointing their finger in your face and judging you and raising an eyebrow at you. It's really hard. But I, I try to use my experiences and the things that I went through to identify with that because I get it. I know that they're not trying to be mean. I know that they're not trying to be horrible, but that's just part of it. And they're scared. They're doing it because they're terrified. They're really scared. And you can't attack those people too hard because their heart is technically in the right place. It's just a difficult conversation to have with a lot of them. So no, <clears throat> there's nothing traumatizing that happened to me, but I did go through a lot of different things to get me to this point. And a lot of times people tell me, you're just taking the easy way out. <laughs> you're just doing it. You're just an atheist because you don't want to be held accountable for anything. You don't want to have to, you know, have a God judge you at the end of the day. You, you just want to sin. You just want to be an atheist and you want to be a sinner. <clears throat> yeah. That's really frustrating for me to hear because when I was this deeply religious person, not only was I radical, but, I mean, I really, I meant it. And like I said, my heart was in the right place. And it was important to me. It was almost like a cultural thing, too, you know? Whenever you identify with something so strongly, it's like a part of you. It's your family. It's your friends. It's, you know, people who you congregate with. It's meaningful. And when you let go of that, it sucks. Because I thought I had a relationship with <clears throat> some invisible character. <laughs> that doesn't mean that I didn't actually feel that there was some kind of relationship there. And it's something that you have to break off. It's like a little part of you kind of dies. And at first, it sucks. It's hard. I mean, now, I, I totally am different. I view it as such a positive thing, and I'm so happy, and I feel relieved. I feel like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. I feel like now, I, was, I spent all that time searching for the right church. I finally found something that makes sense to me, and I'm not lying to myself. I'm not trying too hard to make something happen that's not there. <clears throat> but people think it's something that, that, is, that is the easy way out, and it's just this, it blows my mind, because it's hard. Not only is it hard <clears throat> on a personal level, but it's hard because you have to deal with the social repercussions of it too. You have to, you have to deal with you know, the, the scornful looks of your family and friends. You have to deal with people thinking that you're worse than a rapist. So it's definitely not easy. It's definitely not the easy way out. And it was hard for me. I spent many nights crying about it, you know, having sad conversations with family members who look at me disappointingly. I mean, you know how hard it is <laughs> to have People look at you and almost have tears in their eyes and, and you know, tell you how disappointed they are in you whenever you are excitedly trying to tell them about your life. You know, I, I try to tell people, like, I'm, you know, going to Sacramento and I'm going to do this, you know, talk. And they're like, Ugh, about atheism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was telling this to a friend of mine who, um, she's a... I met her through YouTube. We have this like group conversation that we do. We do like this uh, Google Hangout thing. And there's like a variety of people on there. And this one girl that I met happens to be a stripper. And I was telling her about this story. And she's like, yeah, that's pretty weird. That's like my parents, you know, asking me, oh, you're going to work tonight? You're going to take off your clothes? <laughs> no, I strip in my sweatpants. <laughs> But yeah, they, they asked me that seriously. Oh, why, why are you traveling, you know, Northern California? You know, talk about atheism. Yeah. Sorry. That's like what I do now. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's hard because they, uh, yeah, that's going to have some effect. It's hard because they definitely judge you for it. And you want, you want your parents to, you know, approve of your life. You want them to approve of what you're doing. And it's hard to constantly have to face that look. When you're excited about something, when you're working towards something that's good, and they just, ugh, atheism. You know, I'm never going to have that approval. I hope that it gets better. But at some point, you have to just accept that that's a part of your life you can't share with people. And then it's like half the relationship is gone because you can't be yourself. You can't, you know. So it's definitely not the easy way out. So don't, I get so mad when people tell me that. Don't you dare tell me that I'm taking the easy way out. This is hard. 
if I, you know, and, and it, it sucks too. Like you don't, you, you want to be able to say that when you die, you're going to, you know, see your loved ones again. You want to say that when you, you know, whenever you die, that you're not gone, you're just in a better place. That's nice. You know, that's nice. You, you don't want to think otherwise. It's more depressing. But just because something is depressing doesn't make it true. And I would rather not lie to myself. And that's a concept that's really hard for a lot of people to understand. So no, definitely, definitely not the easy way out. So yeah, more distrusted than rapists, that's sad. And I think that it's important to kind of talk about why. Why are we more distrusted than rapists? Why is this something that's just so horrible for people to identify with? And I think that there are three main reasons and I have them written out here. Number one, they think we have no morals. I'm sure you've heard it a ton of times. Number two, they feel attacked by it. And number three, the unknown makes them scared and very uncomfortable. So the first one is talking about how we have no morals. <laughs> I don't want to go into this too much because I'm sure you've heard about it ad nauseum. I mean, you, you know, atheists have no morals. How could you have no morals if you don't follow the Bible? Okay, the Bible? <laughs> you want to talk about the Bible? Okay. Homicide, genocide, <laughs> infanticide, selling women for money, paying fines for rape. Really? What a great book that is. That's just, but there are good parts. You have to look at the good parts. <laughs> okay, don't kill people. I think it kind of contradicts that good part. Don't steal things. I don't really need, I don't need religion to tell me that. And that's one thing I say all the time. Like you can have the good parts of religion without the religion, which definitely brings a lot of negativity. So no, I don't want to talk about morality. And then they say, you know, like, like I said before, that you're only an atheist because you don't want to take responsibility for your own actions. I'm sorry, how does that Christianity thing work again? You can do anything you want your whole life. You can, you can be a murderer, you can be a rapist, you can be an atheist. <laughs> Terrible things like this. And uh, as long as you repent, as long as you say, I'm sorry God, at the end of the day, as long as you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you're fine, <laughs> off the hook, you're totally cool. I'm sorry, what were you saying about me not having to take responsibility for my actions again? Seems like that's a pretty integral part of Christianity, a lot of different religions, repenting. So I don't want to hear about that. We have no morals, okay. They have a hard time understanding that, that morality could be something, and this is something that we were talking about earlier, that morality could be something that is evolutionary. <laughs> it's kind of an altruistic type of thing. It's in our benefit to not kill each other. That's something that's a, for most people. <laughs> Um, so the next thing, they feel attacked by it. Now, there's a really interesting video on YouTube by Dark Matter. Do you guys follow Dark Matter 2525? It's really good. Yeah, it's a really good channel. Yay. Can I get an amen? All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he has a video out there called uh, The Real God. And it's about rejection. Have you guys seen that one? Is it? It's really interesting. He talks about how whenever somebody is told that you don't believe in God, it's almost like you're rejecting them in the same way that if you ask them out on a date and they said no, they get the same kind of rejection. And the reason that he gives for that is because God is a projection of them. So whenever you reject God, you are rejecting them. And there's a psychology behind that and people take it very personally. They feel attacked by it because it's a rejection. It's a form of rejection and that's definitely not something that anybody likes. But that's why a lot of them get you know, worked up by that. And then a lot of times they feel attacked because atheists and people who are free thinkers Think freely. We ask questions. You don't even have to, you know, try to debunk what they're saying. You just have to ask a question. And they view that as an attack. So often, whenever I'm having conversations with people that I know who are religious, I'll ask them different questions. And they're like, why are you attacking my belief system? I just want to I just ask a question, you know, backing down slowly. They, they view that as an attack. It's like you can't even have a conversation without it feeling like an attack. And then another reason why they feel attacked is because they have a sense of entitlement. They feel like separation of church and state is just something that people say. It doesn't actually apply, you know. America's a Christian nation. How many times have you heard that? A lot. They feel entitled. They feel like, and God we trust should be on the money. They feel like one nation under God should be in the pledge. They feel like there should be religious things in schools and on, you know, political offices and things like that. They feel like they deserve that. So whenever you try to take away a 
privileged status. They view that as an attack. When honestly, you're just going for a secular society. You're not asking for it to be a no God we trust or one nation under no God. You're not asking for atheism to be inserted in its place. You just want it to be something that everyone can relate to secular. And they view that as an attack because whenever somebody's held a privileged status for long enough and you try to take it away, oh my God, I deserve that. I'm entitled. So the next thing, and this one is probably my favorite because it's something that I don't hear a lot of people talk about a lot, is that the unknown makes them uncomfortable. It's scary to say that you don't know all of the answers. How many times have you heard people say that atheists have just as much faith as religious people? Ugh. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of different things in science that we can point to that explain different things that used to, used to be attributed to supernatural causes. You know, God of the gaps. Every time you fill a gap, you make two more. That's the kind of thing that, that they just don't understand. So <laughs> whenever you say, well, yeah, there are gaps, but we're working to fill them, and right now we don't know everything, they're like, aha, checkmate, atheist, you don't have all the answers. It's like, well, we never said we did. You know, so <laughs> that's something that I deal with all the time. The unknown is scary. They would rather have an answer that they might even subconsciously know is not true, because at least it's an answer. <laughs> when I was at TAM, uh, there was a, a medical doctor that spoke for a little bit, and he was talking about how sometimes patients come in and you don't know what's wrong with them. They, they have very generalized symptoms. I, I have fatigue. I, I, you know, I'm dizzy. I have really bad headaches. You know, I, I get anxious. And, you know, and, like, and they're convinced that they have something really wrong with them. So you're like, okay, you, you do the blood work. You do the CT. You do the MRI. You do all kinds of tests and everything comes back normal. And when you give them the normal results, they're disappointed. They're disappointed because they wanted an answer. It's like, you don't have a brain tumor. Oh, okay, sorry. Like, it's like they, they want so badly to just, uh, even if it's bad, because then at least having an answer, they have some kind of power over there. They have some kind of control. So whenever there's a God, you have some kind of control because you can pray. And the unknown is scary. So they would rather have an answer, even if they think maybe there's a chance it's fictitious, because at least it's an answer. And atheists can't do any better. Saying you don't know? The hell kind of answer is that? Unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. <laughs> the unknown is scary. There's power in numbers. And that's another thing. Whenever there are more atheists, there are less people who are religious, and they feel like this majority rules kind of mentality gives more credibility to their claims. How many times, are, like, this is another thing. How many times have you heard this? Whenever you talk to somebody about being an atheist, they're like, well, there's more of us than you. <laughs> okay, is that supposed to prove something to me? Because it doesn't. A lot of people say that. They, they think that there's some sort of power in numbers so that if there are a lot of atheists, that means, crap, they might actually have something to it. And we represent the unknown. So the power of the unknown is growing, and not only is that viewed as an attack, it's extremely scary for them. So there's, you know, there's a growing number of atheists, and, uh, and that's nice that that's you know, happening right now. But they, they just can't accept it a lot of times. They just, it's scary, unknown is scary, rule it off, can't respect it. But it's funny because whenever other types of religions get brought up, at least in my experience with people I've talked to, the attitude kind of changes. They're like, oh, they're Muslim? Whoa, 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 that's fine. We have to respect other religions. Hello? <laughs> Why can't you respect me being an atheist? Oh, because that's just immoral. You know, it's like you can respect other religions, but you can't respect atheism. And I think the main reason for this is because they still believe in something greater. They're still lending credibility to the core deistic belief. You know, they're still... You know, it might not be my particular fairy tale, but at least it's a fairy tale that this person over here is living in reality. How dare they? I think that's probably why. Okay, so I'm going to admit a guilty pleasure of mine. I like watching really girly shows, like really corny girly shows, whatever. It's like one of my things. I like doing it. Um, total nonsense, but I find it entertaining. I like to check out and watch random things sometimes. <laughs> I don't remember what the show was, but one time I was watching an episode of something and I was working on a video but I got distracted and started watching it and three girls were out to dinner and it was really funny. The, um, the waitress comes around and, and she asks them, oh, you know, what would you like to order? They order dinner, they have a great time and then it comes time for dessert. 
first girl orders dessert, fine. Second girl orders dessert, gets to the third girl. Oh no, I'm on a diet. You should see the death stares that she got from the other two girls who were like, you're not gonna eat dessert with us. <laughs> and first of all, uh, whenever I saw this, you know, me, I think of religion because that totally relates, right? I'm thinking, well, this reminds me of being an atheist. Like, we're the ones saying no thanks, you know? Because now these other two girls who are sitting there eating dessert are more conscious of what they're doing. Because somebody's not doing what we're doing, but does that mean that I need to question what I'm doing? Am I doing something wrong? Am I being unhealthy? Do I, should I be more aware of what I'm putting into my body? Should we be more aware of what we're putting into our mind? I feel like that's, that's something that's a common mentality with, with people who are religious. They see you and the fact that you're not buying into the same thing that they're buying into is just not okay with them because now I have to think twice about what I'm doing. And that's a scary thing. So the unknown is scary. So I feel like it's important to keep these things in mind whenever you move forward and trying to combat them because it's a mentality that almost everyone that I've encountered that is super religious has. And as much as I'm embarrassed to admit my religious upbringing and how radical I became in college, in college <laughs> it serves a purpose for me at least. Because I feel like whenever I'm conversing with, with very religious people, I already know what they're gonna say. I already know what they believe. I can empathize to a degree because I was the same way they were. I get it. So using that, how can we try to make atheism a positive thing? Uh, let me correct that. Atheism is a positive thing. How can we get them to view atheism as a positive thing? That's the trick. Well, there are different things that we can do, and unfortunately, it's gonna be a slow process. There isn't gonna be like a magic spell that just snaps all of them, oh great, atheist, yay. Um, but I feel like one important thing is to be open about it and come out. This isn't easy. I already told you my story. It wasn't really the best coming out story, but I dealt with it. Be vocal, come out. You don't have to be radical about it. You really don't. When somebody says something like, oh, that storm spared you and your family. Thank God, right? You have to thank God for that. No thanks, I'm an atheist. It's as simple as that. You know, it doesn't have to be like, that's ridiculous, God. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be that extreme. Like, I feel like a lot of atheists, like I said, whenever I first started off, I was more passionate about things. I was more radical about things. And I feel like a lot of people expect that from atheists. But the thing is, is if you come out as an atheist, oh yeah, Jane Doe across the street, she's an atheist and she's totally normal. There's actually nothing really wrong with her. I know it's weird, right? She's an atheist, but she's normal. And I feel like that's one thing that really helped the LGBT movement. Because everybody knows somebody who can identify that way, and it's easier whenever you have friends. And unfortunately, people need causes to be personal to them for them to give a shit sometimes, <laughs> unfortunately. You have to have a friend who's gay to care about gay rights. You have to have a friend who's an atheist to not stigmatize atheism as a horrible, horrible thing. People suck, <laughs> sorry. If the more people know about people being an atheist, the easier it will be for them to accept all of us as not being these crazies. We're not crazy. <laughs> okay, so then once you come out, lead by example. I think you were telling me that somebody here actually recently donated a kidney, is that true? Someone in the room, in the room donated a kidney. You don't have to, if you wanna say, you, okay. But that's really cool, like that's something like that's a big thing to do for somebody. You know, if somebody knew that about somebody and they're like, oh yeah, and she's an atheist. Wow, atheists do nice things? Who'd have thunk it? There are a lot of atheist charities and stuff out there, but I feel like you don't really hear about them as much, which is sad because Christians almost feel like they have a monopoly on charity, which is ridiculous, you know? There's tons of atheists raising money for charity, but guess what? I know why you don't hear about it. Could you imagine, could you imagine rapists raising money for a local children's hospital? <laughs> How's that sound? Effective, right? I mean, seriously, you have to think about it like that because if we're more distrusted than rapists, that's about how bad it sounds. Atheists raising money for a local children's hospital. Ugh, why would I give money to those rapists? No, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> It sounds horrible. So I feel like that's a problem, you know, because people hear it and they're like, no, I'm not giving you money. Of course not. 
So with this in mind, a couple of weeks ago, I did a social experiment with two of my friends. I'm not sure if you guys uh, are totally aware of everybody on YouTube, but I have two close friends of mine, Bria and Chrissy. They're the top lesbian YouTube channel right now, which is exciting. I'm glad that they're so successful. And we've been good friends for two years. And the three of us went out onto Hollywood Boulevard and decided to conduct a little social experiment. The first day we went out and we were raising money for a local children's hospital, which we actually did give all the proceeds to. And we went out as Christians. We had Christian shirts on. We had a big poster, you know, local Methodist group raising money for children's hospital, yada, yada, yada. Stood out there all day. We had people come by. You know, of course, it's Hollywood Boulevard. So you're going to get people who just walk by you. You know, you get run into. People don't care. They're just stomping around like zombies, trying to take pictures of random things that don't matter. <laughs> and, um, but there were a lot of people who would come up, very nice people. You know, God bless you. They'd give us a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, uh, and they'd move on. That was, you know, what we expected. I've done fundraisers before. It was, you know, run of the mill, pretty standard. You know, there were some really nice people. It was great, smiles, and we were like, you know, thank you, you too, kind of thing. But the next day, the next day we went out and we were a local atheist group raising money for the same children's hospital. This was such a weird experience for me. I feel like it hit me harder than it hit them because being an open lesbian couple, you know, they walk around holding hands and unfortunately, even in California, they'll get weird stares now and then. You know, people will look at them differently and they have to experience that discrimination. But like, just looking at me, you wouldn't know I'm an atheist. That's not something that's plastered on my forehead. So I'd never directly experienced discrimination or weird looks. And it was such a strange feeling to stand out there holding up a sign that said atheist. It's like screaming to the world at the top of your lungs, you're an atheist. And the weird looks that I would get and the people, we had cameras all around and we got a lot of re really interesting reactions. I'm working on a video that I'm gonna put together for it. But people would walk by us and like, they'd be like, mm -hmm. you know, and then they'd make these like weird faces like atheist. Oh, the worst faces you've ever seen. Like, I didn't know if people's faces could contort in such a way. But I mean, watching that footage back, it just kind of like, it was a little bit emotional for me. It was like, really? I mean, I'm raising money for a children's hospital. And the previous day, you know, we had gotten such different reactions from people, but it was overall a very positive experience for me. Because guess what? Even though I had to put up with all that shit and I, I was made to feel terrible, like I was some disgusting thing standing out on the side of the road, how dare you, atheist, ugh. We made more money that day. <laughs> Yeah, we made more money. We had most people give us weird looks, walk by, say something mean. We had a few people actually come up and harass us. That was fun. Makes for good at video footage, at least. <laughs> but we had a small group, of, like it was a significantly less number of people that would come up to us and give money. But when they did, the look in their eye, it was something like, I can't even describe it. They were so excited. <laughs> They were like, whoa, an atheist group. That's so cool, you're out raising money. That's, wow. You know, one lady gave us a hug and she's like, thank you for, for like, you know, doing something positive that people can see and like having atheists and being okay with that. Like, that's a scary thing. They're like, has anybody like tried to hurt you or anything out here? I'm like, no, we're fine. But like, there was concern for our safety for sure. I was worried a few times people would get right in our faces, but, but when people actually did identify with us. They came up, they would give us hugs, and one lady almost looked emotional. And they, they didn't give us $1 or $2 or $5, they'd give us $50 <laughs> or $20 or, you know, like, I was blown away. I was like, wow, because they were so passionate. They were so passionate about making atheism a positive thing that they were so willing to do something to help that. They were, they were just so supportive. So I feel like if we try to embrace that attitude a little bit more, it will be heavily supported by people. People are excited about that. They want people to view atheism as a positive thing because it is a positive thing. We stand for so much more than just not believing in God. We are a community of people, whether or not people like to admit it. I know a lot of people try to stay away from the word community because they feel like it's a congregation comparable to churches. And they hate that, they hate being organized. But I think it's important. You have to be organized to accomplish things. You have to be organized to change a stereotype. You have to be organized to raise money for charities, to do events, to do things like this. It's important. And 
when you can get people together like this, we have one thing going for us, we're extremely passionate. I learned that that day out on the street with my friends. Like, these people care a lot, we have big hearts. We stand for more, like I said, than atheism. We stand for equality. We stand for gender equality. We stand for marriage equality. We want religion to stop getting in the way of scientific advancements like stem cell research. We want religion to get out of the classrooms. Let kids learn about evolution, not creationism. If they want to do that, then fine. Indoctrinate them in your own separate churches, but not in school. We stand for so many things that are so good and so positive, and it sucks to have people look at you like the way they looked at me that day. It sucks to have people judge you in such a horrible way. But I know that that's not the case. I know that what we stand for is really positive, and I know that working together we can accomplish really great things. So I think it's important that we keep that in mind when we have to face adversity. Try to focus on the positive things because it is a positive thing. And whether or not they realize it, that doesn't make it not true. <laughs> they eventually will realize it. It's impossible for something so good to go unnoticed forever. And the last point that I want to make, and I think this is important, especially for people who are already pretty strong atheists, is to keep your mind on the goal. Keep your mind on the goal and know when to back off. Okay? Too much of an aggression towards people is going to turn them off. There's a place for that, though. There's a place for that, like <clears throat> YouTube. Um, <laughs> there's a place for that. There's a place because, for me, whenever I was questioning things, I was on the fence, I would go on YouTube and I would watch different videos of people, and they were very aggressive. And at first, I was not okay with it. I was like, oh, that's offensive. That's offensive. But it's not wrong. You know, why am I offended? I started questioning myself, like, you know, what this person's saying is right. Yeah, it offends me, but let me think about why it offends me. And it pushed me over the edge. So I feel like atheism on YouTube may be more firebrand, but I feel like the reason for that is because people are looking for that. Whenever you go online and you search atheist, you're already thinking about it, you're already questioning. It's not like you're a religious person sitting at home. Trust me, my family's not gonna go online and search for atheism. So it's a certain audience that you're, you're trying to target. It's a certain demographic that you're trying to target. For me, my demographic, I'm trying to target a more broad range of people. I'm trying to target the people who are on the fence. I'm trying to target people who are maybe younger who hadn't thought about it before. So I try to be entertaining. I try to do things to draw people in that maybe wouldn't watch Richard Dawkins. I mean, you know, people who wouldn't watch a lecture by Hitchens, people who wouldn't read a book. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of kids just won't read a damn book. They'll watch a video, though. Maybe that video will encourage them to think differently about certain things. But no one to back off, because if you're talking to an extremely religious person, I mean, don't try to enter the conversation with the goal of making them an atheist. Enter the conversation, maybe have them recognize why church and state being separate is a good thing. You know? And if you can accomplish that, yay! <laughs> Power to you. And another thing that I think that a mistake that we make is that as much as I wish everybody would call themselves an atheist, what does it matter really? I mean, what's the goal? Keep your mind on the goal. The goal is to do what I talked about earlier, to get religion out of the classroom, to get religion out of our hospitals, out of our government buildings, <laughs> you know, out of our personal lives, out of our bedrooms, out of our uterus. <laughs> so yeah, that's the goal. The goal is a secular society. Not necessarily that everyone's an atheist and we're all holding hands, yippee, atheist. You know, the goal is, you know, social progress. So too often people get caught up in using certain definitions of themselves, and I think that that's, I understand how that can help, but it's not necessary. If someone wants to call themselves a secular humanist or a skeptic, fine. <laughs> Agnostic even, as much as I'm opposed to that, because it's, in my opinion, it's a, you know, a description of, of knowledge, not belief, but that's fine. Like, if you want to call yourself whatever you want to call yourself, fine, as long as you are for a secular society, we can work together, we can be friends, I don't care. And I think that that's another thing. Whenever people struggle to come out, it's because they're afraid of telling somebody that they're an atheist, because that's such like a strong word, and they just, unfortunately, right now, it's got a negative connotation. It shouldn't, but it does. And I feel like the more people who identify as even these other things and as society progresses, eventually, that will fade. But it might not happen right away, and we have to realize that, and we have to be patient with people. And if you're scared to come out as an atheist, then come out as a secular humanist. Come out as a skeptic, you know? Or just say, I don't know how religious I am. You know, you don't have to be like, oh, I'm an atheist. So I feel like baby steps is important and keeping your mind on the goal is important and recognizing that we are a passionate group of people and together we can do really great things because we don't need to make atheism a positive thing because it is. We just need to get people to recognize it. 
So thank you. <laughs> Thank you. She was talking about CAT scans and MRIs. I guess I can't stand over there. She was talking about CAT scans and MRIs and things like that, and I just happened to know something sitting there I thought maybe I would share with you. How often do you meet someone who went through med school for two years and then dropped it to lead the next generation into free thinking? So I just... I think it's awesome that, that she has done several years of med school, and I have some ailments that I need some advice on later, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> um, also, um, we have, have you, how many of you are aware that we have gone around, we've done this for about two years, in blue t-shirts that say, Ask an Atheist on them? Have you seen that? Um, so we've done that for a couple of years. So we have a shirt to give to her. I don't have it here today. So she's going home with the shirt, bright blue, front and back, ask an atheist, and it says sack fan on it. So we're sending her home with that. We're going to have a question and answer now. And I think rather than worry about the microphone, I'm going to ask Jacqueline to just repeat the question so it goes onto the tape. And just stay where you are. Maybe stand up. It would help. Um, so a Q&A period. Nice, healthy questions for her. She's ready to answer on any subject. Now I'm curious as to how your family and friends actually found out this. Did they actually Google? Did they just find you on YouTube? Or? Okay, so she's curious how my family and friends actually found out that I was an atheist, if they Googled me and then found it. Um, I think what happened was one, um, one person that I know in particular is kind of, you know, they're, they're not sure about religion, and uh, they found me, <laughs> they found one of my videos, and honestly, it just kind of passed through the grapevine. Um, they assumed that other people that I knew already knew about it, so they brought it up, oh, that's so cool that she's, you know, doing blah, 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 there, she's doing what? You know, so, yeah, it, it wasn't planned, and I wish it was something that I could have done on my own terms, but honestly, like I said, I was stupid for thinking that I could do this for so long without somebody finding it and telling other people, so. I handled it the best way. It's, honestly, right now, it's a little bit better. Like, I still deal with things, but, you know, they've, they've come to at least get it, okay? It's not just a phase that they were hoping so desperately for. <laughs> the door's open now. <laughs> Where did you go to school? Okay. Where did you go to this Catholic school? <laughs> well, time to put. He wants to know where I went to school in, uh, in middle school whenever I had to nail my little Jesus to my little cross. So it's time to put this school on blast, huh? <laughs> They're going to love me now. <laughs> I went to Corpus Christi Catholic School in Tampa, Florida. Yeah. So, and I went there from kindergarten through eighth grade, and then I went to Tampa Catholic High School for four years. And, oh, guess what? This is great. The mascot? Crusaders. <laughs> Tampa Catholic Crusaders. I shit you not. <laughs> so, yeah. Woohoo! We killed people. Go us. Go team! <laughs> <laughs> yes? What do you tell people when they think that you have to have a lot of faith to be an atheist? Okay, she wants to know what I tell people whenever they say that you have to have a lot of faith to be an atheist. Um, I think I just pretty much go into the definition of atheism. Um, I feel like a lot of people think that atheism is a belief that there is no God. And I'm sure that there are atheists out there who, who may think this way, but I feel like, and you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's just semantics, but I think it does make a difference because saying that atheism is a belief system is just wrong because it's a lack of a belief system. So I'm like, atheism is not a belief that there's no God. Atheism is the lack in a belief in God. So sometimes that helps and sometimes it doesn't. Does that answer your question kind of? I mean, it's not a belief system, so it doesn't require faith. Faith in what? I mean, like, do you have to have faith to not be a Muslim or faith to not have another, you know, religion? Like um, the popular saying, everybody is an atheist except for we just go one God further, you know? <laughs> so... Yeah, no, it doesn't require faith. So. Yeah? Uh, how do you, what do you suggest about combating the Christian privilege? For example, I'm a PTO president at my kids' school, and you know, I'm real active in the community, but I'm terrified to put my atheist American sticker on my car that I bought a few years ago because I don't want my car key, I don't want my kid targeted, I don't want people to stop getting involved in the school because, oh, the crazy baby is going to be there. So, I mean, and it really stems from a lot of the Christian privilege. You know, nobody's scared to put a Christian fish on their car or 
whatever their Bible verses and stuff. So yeah. I don't want just I, I'm out in a person to person mm-hmm. level, but you know, how do you suggest how that would like privilege? So she wants to know, this is a long thing to reword. <laughs> um, no, it's okay. She wants to know how to combat Christian privilege. She uh, is afraid of having people act out at her school because she wants to put an atheist sticker on her car. And, uh, and she doesn't want it to be keyed. And she doesn't want you know, kids to be targeted because of that. Um, I have a flying spaghetti monster sticker on my car. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it's, it's not something that ever really gets a lot of comments, to be honest. So, I mean, it might be different at a school. And that's hard. Um, but I've seen a ton of cars with the Darwin fish on it like that's actually not that uncommon and it's not your problem that other people are made uncomfortable by it you know what I mean it might be if they if they do something but I don't think that they would actually go out of their way and like key your car or something but I mean like I no, no promises um <laughs> Jacqueline told me that this wouldn't uh, no um <laughs> I don't know I just I feel like I feel like the only way to deal with that is to just be you and if, if you want to get a more mild sticker to put on your car like a Darwin fish. If that makes you more comfortable, then fine. More people, less people, I think, take offense to that than the word atheist because the atheist word is just so horrible to most people. Um, but yeah, it's really hard. I feel like if they know you and they know that that's your car and they know that you're a nice person, then they might not act so aggressively. But I mean, like that's part of what the whole movement is about. It's like about destigmatizing the word to the point and the movement to the point that that kind of thing isn't, isn't viewed as such a satanic, horrible thing. But that's really tough, because I, I know that you can be targeted, because I've been targeted, you know, a lot for, for saying the things that I'm saying, but it's like at some point you have to make a decision on what it's worth to you. You know, and I tell that to a lot of people too who are afraid of coming out. They're like, well, I know that I might face, you know, certain repercussions with people, social repercussions with my family or friends or maybe my job or my school. Yeah, you might. <laughs> Like, that sucks, but that's kind of a part of it. You have to just decide at some point, you know, handle it maybe in the most delicate way that you can, but, like, there might be something, and that's just part of it. It's, like, a hard to, it's hard to be at the beginning of a movement. So my sympathies, yeah? My bumper sticker says, have faith in reason. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm hard, that's going to be hard for me to do, too. The people, in reason, not so much, but in that people can reason maybe a little bit. <laughs> I was just saying that, yes, you can have faith in reason, but I don't know how much faith I have in people to reason. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like that sticker, though. I might need to get one. Questions? Yes? Of your um, YouTube channel, I guess you've done about 200, uh, how many, 190? Close to 200 videos, yeah. Close to 200 um, videos. Which has been uh, the most controversial and maybe which has been the most, uh, the one we've learned the most from? Okay. That's a good question. Uh, he wants to know, of the almost 200 videos that I posted on YouTube, which have been some of the most controversial and which have I learned the most from? Uh, <laughs> well, the first videos that I used to put up on YouTube, I would, I would give them from my perspective of being religious, because I was. Um, so there are videos out there of me saying, you can't prove there's no God. <laughs> you can find them there out there. Don't look. Don't, don't watch it. Don't watch it. <clears throat> I never said that. Forget that I said that. <laughs> um, no, but, but there are videos of me saying, well, as a Christian, I think this. You know, or, you know, you can't prove that there's no God, therefore it's got as much validity as blah, 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 blah. Uh, I learned a lot from those. I'm going to go with that for that question because the comment section ripped me apart <laughs> on those videos. They were like, you've been indoctrinated, and I didn't even know what that word meant. I was like, what? Indoctrinated? I haven't been indoctrinated. What? No, I haven't. Yes, I had. Um, so, you know, I, I learned a lot about myself with those videos because, like, I would I'd pretty much advocate for the same things when I started off. I would advocate for, you know, marriage equality or gender equality. I'd talk about different social issues and, you know, I pretty much hold the same beliefs now that I did then, except for that I'd say, as a Christian, yada, yada, yada. Um, and people were like, why as a Christian? You know, because YouTube is a very atheist place. I mean, it's... <laughs> There are not very many religious people on the internet, much less YouTube. YouTube atheism is a pretty big thing, I've, you know, become aware of. But yeah, the comments on those videos really taught me a lot about myself. And I, you know, I'm the kind of person that whenever something, you know, makes sense to me, even if I don't like it, even if I previously thought differently, it's impossible for me to ignore it. 
Like, I can't. Like I said, whenever I, that's why people feel like atheism is a choice sometimes. It's not. You know, I couldn't make myself believe if I wanted to, and at times I wanted to. I just can't. Like, whenever something is right in front of me and it makes sense, I can't help it. I have to go with it. So the comment section, as hard as it was for me to, like, face up to it, those changed my mind. They really did. They helped a lot in my conversion, deconversion. Um, but most controversial, definitely, I, uh, I attacked Islam on a couple of my videos, and I have never received as many death threats. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, seriously, there was one person who, uh, I, I moved to California not too long, you know, before I made this video, and this person thought that I still lived in Florida, and they had geolocated on uh, Google Maps my house. <laughs> they were like, you live here. You better stop this shit, or I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna find, you know, everyone who you know, and I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to slit your throat in the street. Like, seriously. <laughs> I got a lot of death threats. I mean, nothing ever happened. And a lot of people ask me, they're like, uh, are you going to continue this? Because uh, I don't want to know, I don't want to hang out with you in public. <laughs> Target on, on your back. But uh, yeah, that's definitely one of the most controversial things. But I'm never, I'm never going to stop criticizing things like that. You know? <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's just life. I mean, whenever I, um, I went to uh, one of the unbeliever screenings, and there was a, Lawrence Krauss and Richard Dawkins were there and they were answering questions after and they had to have dogs come in and sniff the place for bombs. So I feel like that's just a part of it. Like there's always gonna be that danger because you're, you're saying things that people don't like. You're you know, criticizing very radical people and it can be scary, um, but it just comes with the territory and it's something that you have to kind of <laughs> accept and move forward with, but yeah, good question. Yes? If you were, um, started out speaking there must have been something, mm -hmm. turning point. Do you remember that moment that it turned for you? When you said, you know what I'm asking? Were, were you actually, with all this stuff coming down that you made the turn, mm -hmm. someone starts uh, mm -hmm. coming out of the name? Do you remember okay. that incident? That's a good question. Um, he wants to know what the turning point was for me since I started off making videos as a Christian. What was the one thing that kind of made me snap and, and turn into an atheist? And I get this question a lot. It's a really popular one. and. and there are different things that, that helped me become an atheist, but there wasn't a specific thing that just did it for me. It was a really kind of slow and painful process. <laughs> I hated it. Like, it, was, it wasn't fun. Um, but there must be a place where one video you made as a Christian and the next one you made as a non-Christian. Well, no, actually. There, the, um, no, I made a video. He wants to know if there was a, a point where I made a video as a Christian and then the next one as an atheist. Um, I made a video uh, coming out as an agnostic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happened, uh, you know, and like I said, I've recently gone back and, and uh, I talked about why it, it's like a pet peeve of mine when people say that they're agnostic, I'm like agnostic, what, because, you know, gnostic means knowledge, so agnostic means to not have knowledge, of course you don't know for sure whether or not there's a God, I mean, Atheists are technically agnostic, agnostic atheists, unless you have some kind of information that I don't know about. Uh, Christians are technically agnostic Christians, but they won't admit to that because they just know. Um, you know, but my video was pretty much coming out saying that I didn't know because I felt like that was something that needed to be explained, apparently. <laughs> I know this may shock you, but I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was a slow process. Uh, do you read yeah. the comments? Uh, do, I, do you read all your comments? Um, do I read all my comments on my videos? <laughs> Um, I try. I mean, normally whenever I post a video, um, I'll stay on it for an hour or so and, like, try to respond to different things and read a lot of comments, but, I mean, I get a crazy number of comments. And normally, like, um, I'll pay attention to my most recent video, but once I upload on top of that, normally I don't go back through and, like, look at all the old ones and stuff, you know, so I miss a lot of things. You know, and also I'm on Twitter, so I'll tweet something and then I try to read the responses or, you know, Facebook, I'll post something, I'll try to read the responses and, you know, then there's Tumblr and there's Instagram and there's Vine and there's, like, a billion social media apps that I try to keep, you know, track of, so it's not even just YouTube. But, you know, but I, I try to read a lot of them, but I definitely probably miss about half. <laughs> so, did you have a question? Yeah. Um, what's your favorite my favorite Bible story. Oh, that's a good one. Hmm. Man, there's so many good ones. I mean, like, I, I want to be sarcastic with this. Hmm. My favorite Bible story. I don't know. Like, from a funny standpoint, I think the creation story is interesting. You know, Genesis is <laughs> talking snakes and things. That's, you know, makes for a good storyline. Um, 
a lot of times whenever I'm, I'm talking to people who are religious, I bring up um, whenever the, the kid <laughs> was made fun of for being bald and the bears came and attacked and ate all the others because God is, you know, so merciful. Um, I like to use that one as, a, and as, as an example as to why the Bible is a terrible, terrible thing. So I guess it's one of my favorites in that sense because people kind of hear that and they're like, yeah, yeah, that's not that great of a story. <laughs> uh, favorite. Yeah? Um, I'm single and I have like online dating sites. Mm -hmm. I talk to my friends about them and they always suggest get rid of asking for atheists. Like I'm looking for atheist men and they always tell me why do you need that? Like anything I can say, anything else but that I need to get rid of. What do you suggest to say to people that say that? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, her question is that she goes on dating sites and she lists that she's an atheist and, and has that as a requirement for someone. And she's been advised to get rid of that on her profile and what my thoughts are on it. Um, I mean, it depends on your personal situation, kind of. I mean, would you be open to dating someone who wasn't an atheist? No. <laughs> be careful with that, though. Be careful with that, though, because, I mean, especially with younger people, they don't really think about religion. They don't think about it. I mean, maybe they do, but I mean, come on, not, not to the extent that other people do sometimes. And if you're an atheist, think about it a lot because it's always in your face. You know, if you're a Christian, it's just like, you know, you accept it, you move on, you see it everywhere. Yeah, Christians, woo. -hoo. You know, they, they might, you know, admit to being Christian without even really thinking that they're a Christian. And maybe being with an atheist would change their mind. That's been my experience. You know, not that my goal in dating someone who is, you know, identifies as a Christian is to convert them to be like me because I, I don't want to ever enter a relationship wanting to change someone. But it happens. <laughs> like, you know, because, you know, you know, me, I talk about things, we have conversations, and um, I did it. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> so it's possible. Um, it's definitely possible. It's, it's hard because atheism seems to be a bad thing, which is what I spent the majority of, you know, this, this whole speech talking about. But if you're with a guy, or a girl, whoever you're with, and they feel like they're religious. Depends on how deeply religious they are. If they're radical, if they're like evangelical, if it's like their life, they go to church every single week, and mm, probably won't work out. <laughs> that probably won't work out. But if they're like, yeah, I, I, I'm a Christian, I guess, yeah. That, uh, you know, that I think you can work with. Not that, not that you need to try to change them, but that they're not gonna like force it on you. If they can accept you for being an atheist, and it doesn't bother them, I feel like it could be reciprocated. At least that's, for me, that's how it works. But, you know, you never know. You don't want to rule anything out. You know, if you fall in love, love is, love is blind. <laughs> you know, if you fall in love with somebody, you know, eventually it's like, that might not be the most important thing. So. I was just going to comment on that and say that I dated a non-denominal Christian for about 11 years and she had no problems with me being atheist oh. and respecting each other for that. When we finally broke up, religion had nothing to do with it. We just wanted to be better off than friends. That's awesome. Uh, question? Yeah, um, I just want to know what your uh, views are on like, some of the spirituality, um, new age stuff that some people kind of look into. Uh, <laughs> uh, she wants to know what I think about it's like spiritual atheism to a degree. Is that right? Yes, it is. People, they don't, they, don't, they don't believe in the Christian God. Is it like people who believe and they speak to the universe kind of thing? That kind uh -huh. of thing. <laughs> they, they believe in God, but the God they believe is like source of consciousness. Okay, so their God is like, okay. I personally think it's all nonsense. But again, it goes back to what I was saying before to like focus on the goal. Those are not the kind of people that are causing problems. You know, those are not the kind of people who are getting in the way of, of you know, social progress. So as much as I might not personally identify with that kind of thing, if that makes them happy, cool. <laughs> I mean, I try, to, I try to be as open-minded with these things as I possibly can. Like, don't ask me to meditate with you. <laughs> but, you know, hell, you know what? There's maybe meditation. I'm not saying, like, it has to be a spiritual thing, but, like, I'm a very high-strung person. I'm very stressed. <laughs> and maybe some sort of relaxation technique would be beneficial to me, but not because of spiritual reasons. <laughs> um, so I don't want to, you know, don't knock it till you try it, right? Huh, I'll try anything three times. Just kidding. Um, but no, that, that you know, I, I don't really personally identify with it, but I'm not going to bash it because I don't think it's really causing many problems. Yes? I think it's funny when you wear your blonde wig on the video. <laughs> <laughs> and I was wondering if you can wear your Catholic school uniform on 
Oh my god. <laughs> you guys want me to wear my Catholic schoolgirl uniform? <laughs> he wants to know. Since sometimes I, I play characters in my videos, he wants to know if I would ever consider wearing a Catholic school girl uniform. <laughs> well now, I've been asked that question before. <clears throat> um, no, um, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but my Catholic school uniform was khaki pants and a collared shirt. <laughs> yeah, so that's really not that exciting. Uh, Tampa Catholic High School. Woo, Crusaders. Uh, <laughs> uh, in the back? Question? Yeah, so um, you opened up your uh, speech with like, the whole thing about how like, you just are most distrusted. Yeah. Like, and remind me of another study where basically people were saying, like, no, if you were to elect the president, maybe it's also be the least. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just curious, do you think that we would, in our lifetime, we would have an atheist president or at least? I, yeah. Um, so he wants to know since, since I opened about how atheists are more distrusted than rapists, we're also more distrusted than, um, well, he said that if somebody were to run for president, they're less likely to, to win if they're an atheist, um, less than someone who is a Muslim or gay. Um, do I think that we'll ever see an atheist president in our lifetime? I think that we've had atheist presidents, to be honest. I just think that the way it is stigmatized right now, they are not, they're not going to say that. What I really want to happen, really badly, is for a president to, you know, if they're too scared, fine, serve out your term, and then when you're done and you're in the clear and nothing really is, you know, on you to make decisions anymore, then be like, ha I was an atheist the whole time, gotcha. <laughs> that would be great, but... <laughs> Um, to, to have an atheist be just, you know, open and then become elected president, I would like to say that that could happen, but right now, no. <laughs> I think it's going to take what I just said to happen first, and then once we realize we've had atheist presidents, it might not be such a shocker. But, yeah. Question? Yes? Uh, like you, I went to a religious school for most of my uh, childhood high school. Mm -hmm. What kind of Okay. So he said, like me, he also went to religious school, and he wanted to know what responses I got from those people that I went to school with, or maybe even teachers, now that I'm an atheist, if they've commented on it. And honestly, I wish I had a cool story about that to tell you, but I mean, I really haven't, I haven't really been in contact with any of those people. <laughs> I don't miss them. Uh, I haven't gone back to visit them, and uh, they haven't really reached out to me in any way. I, <laughs> uh, whenever I first started YouTube uh, a couple years ago, I... I went to church with my family, and I don't know if anybody knew about it at that time, though. You know, so I really didn't have the opportunity to be confronted. But I'm sure if I went now, that maybe there'd be somebody that might make for an interesting conversation. But yeah, okay. Thank you. Let's. Oh, get away from the speakers. <laughs> Let's thank Jacqueline and Glenn again. Jacqueline Glenn again. Excellent. Awesome.